When you think about your career, what do you think about? Do you think about monotony? Limited opportunities for growth? Being treated like a number? Or do you think about excitement? <laughs> Growing as quickly as you'd like to grow. Feeling valuable and fulfilled. It's impossible to explain what happens here. You need to be part of it, to feel it. At AO, we focus on creating long-term careers for growth-minded people. These careers are designed to help anyone learn how to run their own business. Here, you're in business for yourself, but never by yourself. If we're the right fit for each other, our team will carefully pair you up with a mentor, someone to teach you, coach you, and show you the way to success. That mentor is by your side every step of the way. There will be successes. They'll help you celebrate them. There will be challenges, and they'll help you overcome them. But all in all, there will be growth, accomplishment, and fulfillment in your professional life provided you bring a positive attitude, a strong work ethic, and a desire to achieve great things. AO is the third largest distribution channel for Globe Life. The Globe Life companies have more policyholders than any other company in our industry in the world. Since 1900, they've grown. They've grown through world wars. They've grown through the Great Depression. They've grown through pandemics and global crises. And most recently, they've created new ways for our people to maintain success and grow even faster by creating a virtual business model so we can provide the highest level of service possible for our clients from home. We want to tell you our story. We want to find out if we're the right fit for each other. But most of all, we want to show you what so many in our organization are experiencing every day of their lives. Strength, stability, societal impact. We want to show you the path to achieving your dreams. I'm Aaron Ebel out of the San Jose office. What I was doing before Altig, I was actually, I was pretty lost. I was kind of bouncing from job to job. It was all within the food industry. So I was a pizza delivery guy, I was a busser, you know, dishwasher, waiter. One day I was pouring water. It was at the last restaurant job I ever had. And this group of people, about 30 people, they all came in 15 minutes before closing and they rented out the restaurant. I was pretty upset about it, but they all looked like they were having a great time. You know, they were drinking wine. It was a Monday night, by the way. And then I came to find out that they all worked together. And then from that point, I knew that's what I wanted in my personal life, and it's also what I wanted, you know, for my career. And then I ended up pouring Mark Nielsen's water and Harold's water, and then everything just changed from there. What really attracted me about American Income and Altig was initially it was the culture. It's a professional job and yet everyone they act like they're best friends. When you go to work you don't feel like you're working, you just feel like you're seeing your friends and you get paid to do it. And then of course you know when I had my interview I found out how much money you can make and that you didn't have to have a, a college degree, you didn't have to wait for someone ahead of you in the company to you know die or retire to move up in the company. It's all at your own pace and it's all based on your own hard work. That appealed to me the most because I always felt like I was a really hard worker but I never really got the shot that I wanted and so I, I knew that Altig was that shot. Altig's changed my life in a lot of ways. First, of course, is income. You know, I can spend money on things I always wanted to spend money on without really having to worry about looking at my bank account as much. I was able to buy a brand new luxury car in my first eight months with the company. That one felt amazing. And then I just feel like I've really grown as a person. I have more confidence in my abilities with people, my career, and just life in general. For anyone new that's starting with Altig, I guess the biggest advice I would give them is to really just believe in yourself, ha have confidence in yourself, and know that the people that are around you, your mentors, your coworkers, they wanna see you grow as much as they wanna grow. Just listen and then the rest, it just comes to you. It might take a little while, it might be really quick, but just you know, trust the process.
So AO has changed my life in so many ways. I knew I wanted to do something better for myself. I wanted something more. I never really saw myself in the specifically sales field. So seeing a woman actually do it really changed my mind about it. There's no opportunities like this out there. We can take this outside, outside. Hey. Looking at the stars, staring with my mouth wide. Yeah. It's just the vehicle that gets you where you want to be in life. You didn't have to have a college degree. I'm able to now help families just like mine. So my income has nearly doubled, almost tripled since I started. The complete support that you have with this team is unparalleled. I don't know a lot of career paths that can legitimately save your life. Also follow your heart. You know, you know what you want for yourself, you know what you want for your family, go get it. I know with this opportunity anything is really possible, anything I can put my mind to I can absolutely make happen. Uh, and with the mentorship and the team that I have backing me, I know that there's going to be some big things in the future, absolutely. I'm Kendra Semestruck and I work out of the Surrey office in BC, Canada. And I've only been with the business less than three months. And I've only been in our office one time. I was there last weekend. Um, it's been a pretty new journey for me, but every month has been growing and growing. I wrote over 11,971 ALP for the week in May. And it was absolutely incredible. Um, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> So the reason that I think I got so much success in that week is because I decided to be coachable. When I first started out in this business, I had a couple people tell me that I was fairly hard headed and I didn't really listen that well. And from that point moving forward, I just made a vow to myself to be coachable. Whether I liked it or not, these people knew what they were doing in the business and I didn't yet and I needed to learn what they were doing. So I had to make a vow and a promise to myself to be 100% coachable or this was never gonna work. So um, I just started with that and just listened to everything that I was told to do. Um, you know, did my, my dials and smile and dial and um, put my head down and really focused and it paid off with an amazing week. Um, and it really helps with the show ratio. Something else that I'm doing to make sure my business is running smooth is making sure that things at home are running smooth. And as a single mother, that can be really tricky. So something I did was implement a schedule, not only for myself, but for my 10 year old son as well. That way it gives him a little bit of um, a task list throughout the day and some responsibilities so that he can feel some pride in what he's doing and make sure he stays focused. And it really helps me to be able to stay focused when I need to buckle down and uh, get on that phone or be in sits with clients. And then I can really have that undivided attention. What did you do before this? Um, <laughs> I didn't really work. Um, I was in a I was in a really bad relationship for a lot of years and I wasn't allowed um, to do much for myself. Um, it was really abusive and uh, it took a long time to get out of it. I was with him for eight years and um, it was in Calgary and I left Alberta and just came here because my parents were in Sycamus and I just I wanted, like, I knew that I was better than that. Like, I was better than that situation. And I just didn't want to, I didn't want to waste my potential anymore. Like, I wasn't stupid and I wasn't, I wasn't the things that he said I was, you know? And, um, yeah, so I just, I left and um, I quit drinking because that was a big part of it too, was with our fighting and our drinking. I quit drinking. I've been sober for two and a half years and, um, I just changed my life. I I was paralyzed from the waist down um, because of an accident. I had kidney failure and cardiac arrest. I died actually and they had resuscitated me. And, um, it was at that point where I just knew I had to get out of it. And um, I had a long way to go, but I fought. <laughs> I fought really hard. I just want people to know that there's hope. Like you don't have to be stuck forever. Like. And this company offers that so well, like that Opportunity Unlimited is for real. That's for real. Like I've lived it. <laughs> so it's so good.
And I'm gonna ask you first, when you hire people, do you have a compelling story? Do you have a compelling story to share with people about this opportunity? Do you have a story now after you've been here that you can tell people in one minute what this opportunity is all about and where you're going? You know what, I've got a compelling story. I loved to see Lisa when I first started with the company. But I knew, unless I saw 20 people a week, I couldn't see Lisa. I remember one week, Lisa always liked chickens and animals, and she was in college. And I went to these people's house, and I'm sure you guys have been to the house. I'm sitting there going through the presentation, and all of a sudden a rooster comes in and sits up on the couch. I go, you guys got chickens, huh? They go, yeah. I go, oh, my girlfriend loves chickens. She just really likes them. The lady goes, does she have any? And I go, well, no, she's going to college. She goes, well, why don't I give you some chickens? You can take them home. <laughs> she gave me three chickens. <laughs> I left that house with like a, a couple of deals and three chickens. <laughs> and I'm driving. I think I had my little diesel rabbit, and I had these three chickens in the back end. And I thought I had them in the cardboard box pretty good. And the cardboard box opened up. I'm driving down the road, and these chickens are like flying all over my... <laughs> Oh my gosh, but I remember I couldn't show up with those chickens unless I'd seen 20. It was Thursday night and I had to see one more. And I always remember it was 1984 and I decided I got to do a drop by. I got to do a drop by. It's nine o'clock at night. I just got to get there. I got to do a drop by. And I went to these people's house and I always remember their name because it was Charles and Diana. I don't remember their last name. And I knock on the door. I said, hi, I'm Rick Altig with American Income. Hey, I've been wondering when you guys were going to come out here. I was like shocked, right? I never could get a hold of this person. He goes, I've been wondering when you were going to come out here. We've had like four people call. They always say they're going to come and they never show up. And we've been waiting for you to come out here because we want to buy a policy. Well, I enrolled Charles and Diana. I had the chickens in the car. I drove back to, the, Lisa lived on Capitol Hill, Hill here in Seattle in a big house that she rented a room. I remember her landlord was a little upset when I brought the chickens in. But I got a call about a year later. Charles worked at the meat packing plant. And Charles, white coat that they wear, those guys at the meat packing plant. He was walking by the, the sausage machine and he went in to get something out of, there was some kind of mechanical problem and he went in and it grabbed his coat and pulled him through the machine. Pulled him so bad that they, they could not even recover him. They could really only recover his coat. And you think about that, if I hadn't gone to that one other house, I had three chickens in my car. I could have gone home really easy. But if I didn't have that responsibility inside my heart, that I was gonna see 20 people no matter what, and I really was just thinking about myself and my career, the story's worse than that, because I didn't hear about it. You know, a lot of times we don't hear about our claims. And I happened to be in the office, and Diana called. She goes, Rick, you're not going to believe it. Charles was killed at work. They're both young, just expecting their first baby. And she goes, remember that check we wrote you for $40? She goes, I need to make a claim on that $1,000 policy. I'm like what? She goes, you know, the thousand dollar policy, we need to make a claim on the thousand dollar policy that we got from you. And I go, well, wait, you have a policy. She goes, I know we have the thousand dollar policy. And we started talking and found out that Charles had never changed his beneficiary at the union. He'd left his parents down as the beneficiary on his $5,000 insurance policy through the union. 
And even though Diana was only expecting or was expecting their first baby, his own parents said to her, you know what, Charles must have meant for us to have this. We're not going to let you have the $5,000. So Rick, I'm calling. I really need that $1,000. How fast, how fast can I get it? I said, well, Diana, hang on a second. I think there's more here because you actually enrolled in the Hour Power program. And I went through her coverage. It was just one week later when I, and they used to do it this way, I got to deliver a check for the whole life. I got to deliver a check for the monthly income. I got to deliver a check for the B2000. And I got to deliver a check for the A71000. I got to deliver four checks for over $110,000 of coverage. I got to deliver $110,000 to the same man. 21 years old, that's all she wants. And that forever changed me in this business because I knew I had a responsibility. I knew that it was meant to be. I knew I didn't have a choice anymore to see 20 people a week or not. Because what I was doing was a lot bigger than me. I was in that home that night with three chickens in my car and she gave me a $40 check and she only expected $1,000 for that. Think about that responsibility that I live with every day. Let me share this with you. That's a responsibility that each of you live with. Now I'm talking to your heart right now but you live with that every single day. These people sent in a card and you were the one that was chosen to go out there. And if you don't think it was meant to be, then you're in the wrong business. Quotes that I live by in my life would be preparation plus opportunity equals success. Begin with the end in mind. And criticize through creation. The way I was brought up or the way that my parents really raised all three of their kids was around a few different things. One was faith, and then the second was education, and then the third was sports. On the one hand with my dad, he always had me around business leaders and pastors, and he was the executive director for Promise Keepers, which was a national men's movement. And I remember being in the golf cart with him, driving around the kingdom and these different stadiums and meeting all these different influential leaders. And then on the business side, my mom would take me into the bank with her and I would get to sit with her all day and, and kind of learn how she did things. And those kind of two things were things that ended up shaping really how my work life and career ended up turning out. Basketball was my dream. I wanted to be like my dad. I wanted to get drafted into the NBA and I worked for that. Uh, the first goal that that set was to get a Division I scholarship, which I was able to accomplish, but the work ethic that was instilled through sports, and for me particularly basketball, was something that has created the longevity that I've had in American income. I used to get up at 4.30 in the morning, every single morning, and I would work out with my trainer, then I would go to school, then I would leave school, then I would go to the gym and get shots up, and then I would go to sleep, and I would do that six, seven days a week, and I did that since the eighth grade. What I've loved about sports has been that it was very translatable to sales and it was very translatable to American income life where you practice and you work and then you get on the court or you get in the field and you're able to reap the results of it and that is the way that I approached the business from the very beginning. Before AO, I was pursuing basketball. I was going, trying to get to the league, doing all of that, and then I came back for the summer and needed a job. My father knew Mr. Altig, and I ended up being able to get a job, and my first job actually ever with the company was in the call center. 
and I was in the call center every single day and needed to make extra money and <laughs> went and asked James Hill and I was able to become a janitor. And it just so happened I was downstairs uh, on a break and I walked by a room and all I heard was people dialing on the phone and calling. And that's when I ran into Andrew Bishop and I asked him one very simple, fateful question, if you will, and that was, how much money do you make? Long story short, uh, I ended up getting licensed. Andrew Bishop gave me my first tank of gas to go into the field, and I remember being in this situation to where I'm eating grilled cheese and tomato soup every day. And so I walk into Mr. Altig's office, and I'm like, Mr. Altig, can... <sighs> long story short, basically, can you just cut me a check? <laughs> and I get this like butterflies in my stomach and all this stuff, and he goes, you know, Andrew, I, I, I could definitely do that. And I'm like, yes, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and I was like, no. And he's like, because I'm just telling you, one week in the field can change everything. And that was probably one of the best lessons I ever learned because my first week I wrote $11,000 of production and I learned that from the very first week. The only way you lose in this business is if you quit. Meaning that everybody that's successful in this company are the people that stay. And as long as you stay, and as long as you don't quit, it's not a get rich quick, it's a get rich for sure. Leader of the lions, pick of the litter Against the strongest I'm alive and remain a victor My battle scars are show that I am far from a quitter Went through it all and I'm still striving, that makes me a winner When it's me versus the globe, with my back to the wall And now my lowest of lows, still I put up a brawl Was never in me to fall, never in me to fall So when my story is told, they'll say I gave it my all To say there hasn't been multiple times uh, that I felt like giving up would be an understatement I think that's a part of our business. I think that's really more so a part of life. In my life, it happened very early on. I lost my grandfather, my father, and my brother in a year and a half period of time. I was 23 years old. Uh, my grandfather was just you know, old. He died of natural causes. But my dad died in his sleep at 49. And my brother died on his 29th birthday in his sleep. And so, during those times, for me, I for sure felt like giving up. I for sure felt like quitting. I for sure didn't even feel like talking about death every single day, you know, to people. But it was one of those things that, again, just rung in my head about not quitting and persevering. And I have to say about this company, and by this company I mean AO, was the time in my life where I realized that it wasn't just about the work that, that I was family. And when my brother passed, the first call that I got, the first call that I received, I was on a road trip in Virginia. And uh, you know, you go to those areas where you don't have cell phone reception and all of a sudden I get back to an area where you get some bars and my phone's ringing off the hook and buzzing and text messages and all that stuff. But the first actual phone call that came through um, was Mr. Altig. And he's the person that told me to pull over the car and, and he's the one that actually told me that my brother had passed away. And consequently, in that time frame, within maybe six hours, miss, the, the company had flown me on a plane back to my family, uh, had uh, completely wrapped their arms around me in that time. You know, what kept me going through all of the kind of tragedy and the trials and tribulations really was, you know, something my mom said to me when uh, my father passed, which was, this isn't going to stop us. A lot of times when grief and life happens, you can have all the excuses in the world why you don't do something and, you, and they're valid, right? And a lot of people would empathize or sympathize with you on why you made certain decisions or actions or things like that. She. Uh, really just sat me down and said, Andrew, you need to go for it. And that's what I did. From starting from being in the call center and a janitor to the company, to becoming the director of public relations is somewhat of a leap, if you will. It's just been one of those things where I think that the experience that I've had has been something that's happened throughout my, the entirety of my career. My daughter has been the single biggest impact in my life since she's been born. I mean, you have a daughter, and it, I mean, it's your daughter, right? And you want the best for them, and you want to be an example. Probably my favorite stories about my daughter that applies to the business 
would be the month that I was going for Gold Club, which was to write over and gross over $50,000 of production in a month, which I'd never done before. And so I actually had her <laughs> make like the 50, 60 service folders with me. I had her spread out all the stuff on the counter, and you're the one that's gonna hold me accountable. You need to ask me what, how many people I saw, how many referrals I collected, how much AOP I wrote, and we're gonna mark it off the calendar each time until we hit the goal. And she was right there every single day with me that July in 2018, and it was one of the proudest moments to be able to get that plaque and show her that we accomplished the goal. You know, Opportunity Unlimited has always been who American Income is and who we will always be, but I, I feel and I believe that Opportunity Unlimited has never been more unlimited than it is now. From going from the point to where I was mapping out leads on a physical map using a Thomas Guide and not having internet on my phone and having to ask people who their doctor is and they pull out a phone book uh, to be able to look it up to moving to booking appointments in the palm of my hand and navigating to appointments and doing all these different things to now being in a position to where I can work from home, work in any part of the country that I want to, in any time zone that I want to. I mean, come on. The opportunity has never been more unlimited than it is now. I think we got it there, unless there's anything else. No, I was super dope at basketball, and I'm super dope in the insurance industry. Good afternoon, world's greatest sales force. So often, many of you don't realize the strong relationship that we have with labor throughout the United States and Canada. So I thought today I'd take a few minutes and explain what is that relationship all about. We believe in helping every person in our company get the highest income that they can get and have the best working conditions that are possible. So all of you get a chance to actually join the union and benefit from the CEO to the brand new person that starts in this company to all the people that are in the home office. Everyone's a union member and that gives us special access and recognition by all of the unions saying, you know what? American Income is a union company. They treat their people right and they've got wonderful insurance benefits. And they say to their members, if you're in the market for insurance, if you need something to supplement what you've got through your union contract, you should look to American Income, a union company, to provide those benefits to you. In fact, I'd like to read you right now from the Labor Advisory Board page exactly what the relationship is. These outstanding union leaders provide substantial financial assistance to labor and labor-related causes and develop programs to best meet the needs of union members and their families. And it goes on to say that our Labor Advisory Board recognizes that American Income is a fully organized 100% union company that offers supplemental insurance plans primarily to union members. Now, the Labor Advisory Board, they cannot actually endorse our company and they can't endorse our products, but they certainly recognize that they're union. We actually design our insurance benefits to supplement what the members don't have through work. And that's where your job comes in, because when a mailing goes out or when a, we let members know about our company, they respond to our company and say, you know what? I'm interested in finding out more about those insurance benefits that supplement what I already have through work. And you go out then and you enroll them. Now, you know what's exciting is to look at our Labor Advisory Board and see some of the members that are on there. You can actually find that Labor Advisory Board on the planet. You just go right into the planet library and it has everything that I'm about to show you. But let's look at a couple of these. In fact, 
look right here. Here's Sam Cabral. Now, Sam is the president of the police union. He negotiates all the benefits for police officers throughout the United States. And we all know police officers have some excellent benefits. Now, let's take a look at Sarah Nelson with the flight attendants union. Every time you see a flight attendant, they're part of American income and the American income benefits. And Sarah Nelson negotiates all of the union benefits for every flight attendant that you meet. And here's one that's a lot of fun among all the members that we have. Here's D. Marie Smith. He's the head of the National Football Players League Association. Now, I can't think of anyone that has better benefits than football players, and D. Maurice serves on our board. In fact, I'm going to take you over to all these symbols. You can actually click on each name that's on the advisory board, and you can find out more about the advisory board member. We are the union that represents the players of the National Football League. We are dedicated to the success and well-being of all players on and off the field. I'll tell you, that gives me a lot of security to be with a company that has somebody like Dee Marie Smith and the National Football Players on our board. So now all of you understand our relationship with labor. Remember, it's something that is a privilege and not a right, but you have the privilege as a member of the union yourself to represent American income and its very fine products to union members not only union members, their family and their friends throughout the United States and Canada. Congratulations. Do you guys ever grow up and have people when you were young ask you what you want to do when you grow up? I started out doing janitor work. I was a missionary for my church. Working at a bank. I was actually in college. Every single job that I was in ended up in the same situation where I didn't have any control. I wanted a purpose. I wanted to wake up every single day and say, I'm going to work. This is great. Or rush out of bed because I couldn't wait to get to the office. And fortunately, I got a call from American Income. Every day that you go do anything counts. And every day does matter and who you surround yourself with matters the most. And as soon as I realized that, then that's where my career really took off. I probably thought about giving up over 100 times in 14 years. But you're going to have your hard times whether you like it or not. That's just life. You can't give up on stuff you haven't even tried. But I felt like American Income was the home for me. I realized I'm, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing this for my people. My family. My wife. My future generations. So every day when we go to work, we're help supporting each other. Outside, outside, looking at the stars, staring with my mouth wide. I ain't letting nobody stop me this time. With every single level that I reach and I climb, they ask, Are you from outside, outside? Everything around me I create with my mind. Working too hard, I don't want no downtime. Put my team on, they gon' shine when I shine. We can take this outside, outside hey. Looking at the stars, staring with my mouth wide yeah. I ain't letting no nobody right. stop me this time nah. Every single level that I reach and I climb They ask, are you from outside, outside Everything around me I create with my mind, my mind. Looking too hard, I don't want no downtime nah. my team on, they, they gon' shine can take this. People forget that success has its ups and downs. When you come from a background of not being well off financially, you kind of think to yourself, do you ever deserve to have the lifestyle of a six-figure income? But just like in life and in business, it's not always a walk in the park. And when there are tough times, we kept going. And you always have the opportunity to learn more. Because I think our mission has to be a little bit bigger than titles, a little bit bigger than individuals. It has to be more about what's the ripple that we're really having. The same way Rick Altig, Elia, Rob, James, Dustin, Beanie Camp have had for all of us. There is no privilege greater than the pressure to excel. And no greater reward than earning the respect and fear of others that can only stand in awe of your results. And all of American Income will be standing in awe of your results. You are just not on my level. On my level.
One day I'm walking down the street in Vancouver, British Columbia with my dad. And I don't know if you guys are the same way, but when I hear things that people want in their life or goals that, that they're trying to achieve, I really feel a responsibility to help them do that. And we're walking down the street and my dad all of a sudden looks in a jewelry store window and he goes, Rick, do you see that blue Rolex? And I remember looking at it, I saw that blue like pop right out of the window at me. And he goes, someday I wanna own that watch. That's always been a goal of mine. And I don't know, I just started thinking about it. That's my dad's goal. What if I could actually buy that watch for him? How did it feel when Rick bought me the watch? It absolutely overwhelmed me. I had no idea that I was going to get a, such a beautiful gift like that. And so I think probably about five, six, seven years rolled by and Ilya Orlovich was going to become my partner. I, I kept thinking about what can I do that most represents the Altig family to Ilya Orlovich. And I thought, that blue watch. I give him the, the watch and he opens it up and he said, this is for me. I said, well, you've got a choice you can make. You can either take mine, it's on my arm, or you can take this new one. But Ilya, I would like for you to have the new one because it represents our new partnership together and it represents the future. There's no greater gift that I could give you that represents our heritage, our legacy, than this watch. You know, nobody, nobody earns gifts. Nobody deserves gifts. Somebody needs to give it to you. Somebody needs to want you to have it, to wear it, to be proud of it. Somebody wants you to have something that they already have, and maybe more. So, you know, everybody's asking, how do you get Rolex? Well, it's a gift, but it's also recognition, not for your achievements, for who you are. And the watch doesn't mean anything unless it comes off the wrist of the person that helped you get there. And I would be more than happy, really, to take your watch. In our company, this Rolex doesn't stand for just a watch or a beautiful piece of jewelry or something to be recognized by. None of that. It's a reminder and a reflection that you're involved with a company that's unlike any other. And it's all about uh, sharing with others what we were privileged and grateful to have share with us with our mentors. And I now realize what that meant. Being part of something that was bigger than you. What the Rolex means to me is tradition. It was loyalty, it was love, it was years of hard work. I think about how, how blessed and how lucky and fortunate I am to be where I am right now. So for the last 12 years, 365 days a year, I've taken my Rolex off, I've taken my rings off, and then I put it back on. I almost feel like I'm a superhero because I know that I have to go live by that platinum ring. My advice to the next person to get a Rolex is they just realize the love and thought that was given in that watch as a gift. I always wanted it, but I never imagined I could be honored to receive one. So if you're watching this video, remember that you could be one of those. And I think there's nothing more rewarding for Rick and me than to hear that you know that the two values that they have, that how grateful they are, the character that they chose in life and to be part of this spectacular family where we every day try really hard to do more for others. And you know we're gonna continue doing more for others. And our goal is to give hundreds of these Rolexes over the next several years to people that we want to give them to. And that is the legacy of AO and the legend of the blue Rolex. The only thing I'd say about the Rolex is it just keeps ticking. <laughs> Good afternoon, world's greatest leaders. All of you are here for one reason. You want gold. AO is going big places, and I'm glad that I'm a part of it right now. And I know we can hit 320. That's the goal. Let's go change the world, baby. Feel insignificant. You
better think again Better wake up because you're part of something way bigger You're part of something way bigger So the 320 million, what does it mean to me? It means to me that, that we pushed and it means that we will going to prove the world that we are not small company, we are not even medium company. At that time, we're becoming a, a big company. I, I really would like to see us to get there in five and a half years, and I think we can. I believe we can. We have the best people in the world, and that's why we're winning, because of our culture. I always wanted to create extraordinary company uh, where, where ordinary people can have extraordinary results and great lives. And I think we are there. And I think we're going to now just continue making way, way many more and faster great lives. So that's really exciting. We only compare ourselves with ourselves and how good we are and how great you can become. And we believe that you can become great. And we believe that you can lead masses and that you can, that everybody can be way, way more prosperous because they met. Hey. You got my blood in you, and you're gonna rise. You're part of something way bigger. You're part of something way bigger. The original question is how did we get where we are? How did we get to become bigger? Number one distribution system in all American income. Well, I think the answer is pretty simple. Out of this organization, out of AO, um, any innovation that we always had, we passed to American income and to the rest of the people. And that's why when I say AO, let's grow, I don't mean just financially and in the increases in production or sales and number of managers. I mean, let's grow like I would wish to you to grow your family. So let's go. Step out your estimate. Step in your essence and know that you're excellent, right? The spirit is teaching. No, I'm not just preaching. I'm taking the whole If you feel insignificant, you better think again. Better wake up because you're part of something way bigger. You're part of something way bigger. I'll be the roots, you'll be the tree. Pass on the fruit that was given to me. Legacy. Believing might be difficult, but the need for believing is inescapable.